Next, fighting between Azerbaijan and Armenia over the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh is in its ninth day. Both sides have accused each other of attacking civilian areas and the casualties are going up. Here's the latest video from the region. Uh, this was released uh, by Azerbaijan's defence force inside the town of Talish in Nagorno-Karabakh. Azeri soldiers claim to have taken control of seven villages that were held by Armenians. And you can um, see there are uh, soldiers uh, carrying the Azerbaijan flag. Now, Nagorno-Karabakh is an enclave inside Azerbaijan, but it's run by ethnic Armenians. Armenia and Azerbaijan actually fought a war over the region in the late 80s and 90s, ending in a ceasefire in 1994. Crucially, no peace treaty was signed, so this region is very much under dispute. The conflict escalated over the weekend. Uh, this is Stepanakert, uh, the capital of Nagorno-Karabakh, coming under attack. We're told uh, there were heavy casualties and that civilians have been bussed out of the city. Now, this footage released by Armenia's Ministry of Defence gives you a better sense of the destruction there. Local media say the city has been left with no electricity. The conflict has escalated outside the region into Azerbaijan's second biggest city, Ganja. As you can hear, there was heavy shelling in the city on Sunday. Um, the city is home to 330,000 people. Now, Nagorno-Karabakh authorities claim to have struck a military airport, although Azerbaijan disputes that. Well, hours after that attack, Azerbaijan's president went on national television with this warning. Azerbaijan will not allow anyone to conquer Nagorno-Karabakh. It is Azeri territory. We must return and we will return. My last condition is that we be given a schedule for the withdrawal of the Armenian armed forces from the occupied territories. Well, for the latest on the ground, here's Jonah Fisher in Armenia's uh, capital, Yerevan. Across the contact line, uh, the second biggest uh, city in Azerbaijan, uh, Ganja, uh, has, we are told, been uh, under fire today. It uh, was also uh, attacked at the weekend. We were told then by the Armenians that they were attacking uh, a military airport, but it does appear like some of that shelling uh, ha has hit civilian areas. This conflict uh, is now in its uh, ninth day. Uh, there's very little sign uh, that it's about to come to the end. The Armenians uh, would like there to be uh, a ceasefire and would like there to be talks, but from the uh, Azeri, the Azerbaijani uh, side has, has come a very bellicose uh, message from President uh, Aliyev effectively saying that they would only stop fighting uh, when, uh, when uh, Armenian, uh, Armenian forces have withdrawn from Nagorno-Karabakh and that sovereignty uh, has been uh, returned uh, to Azerbaijan. Well, there's concern about the use of more destructive weaponry in the conflict. We saw evidence of that in Joan Fisher's report from uh, Stepanakert over the weekend. Here's a bit of that. This first week of war has been marked by Azerbaijan's use of military drones, striking at will. Nearly three decades after losing Nagorno-Karabakh, the Azeris appear intent on claiming it back. This soldier is warning that drones have been spotted. And shortly afterwards, there's an explosion nearby. Everybody is scrambling. Come in here. A real reminder as they were fleeing, as why this place is increasingly dangerous for people under attack day and night. And for a little more detail, we also spotted this Jerusalem Post article. The headline, Missiles, Rockets and Drones Define Azerbaijan-Armenia Conflict. It has a detailed and extensive list of uh, military losses on both sides, including more than 100 drones, hundreds of armoured vehicles and hundreds of artillery systems. And specific uh, referenced uh, to this. It's a, well, frankly bizarre music video released by Azerbaijan's military last week, which it claims to be evidence uh, of its drone warfare. Um, you can see four trucks there. We can take a little listen. Yeah, trucks there with 36 capsules, uh, capsules for launching drones um, in that slightly strange video there. Right, let's try and uh, explain all this really. Um, Shashank Joshi is the defence editor for The Economist um, and we can speak live. Thanks so much for coming on the programme. So uh, we'll park the slightly strange nature of that 
uh, video there. But on the more serious matter of the weapons involved here, what's being used on either side of this conflict? The launchers that you mentioned are not just any old drones. Those are Harrop drones, which are a specific kind of loitering munition. Uh, effectively, think of a cross between a kamikaze drone and a very long-legged missile that can fly around the battlefield for hours uh, looking for things to hit on its own and then plough into them without any kind of human intervention. Uh, it's an Israeli-made system that Azerbaijan has had for a while. Uh, and in fact, it used it for the first time, we think, four years ago in 2016, when there was a, a, an episode when a Harrop munition uh, ploughed into a Armenian bus. And they've almost certainly been used this time round again. So it's interesting, even in that music video, which is effectively propaganda, we see some of the most cutting edge military systems that are being used anywhere on the planet. Well, well given that, frankly, slightly uh, ominous and, and scary description you gave there of the, of the weaponry involved, how uh, worried, how concerned are you about the scale of this conflict? We saw some of the damage uh, being done there already in Joan Fisher's report. I think anyone has to be concerned when you have a combination of very advanced systems, strong nationalist passions at play, and also very old fashioned means of destruction that are very unhigh tech, but still involve very bad loss of life, shelling of civilian areas, uh, Soviet era rocket systems. Um, those, are, those are deeply troubling. But I think what this, what the real issue here is not the scale of destruction. It's I think what we are seeing is a reminder of both the old and the new ways of conflict. That is uh, artillery, rockets, machine guns, trenches, infantry fire, but also loitering munitions of the kind that I mentioned. Uh, and uh, I think the, 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 the single platform that has been most effective uh, for Azerbaijan has been a Turkish made drone system um, that is uh, has effectively decimated Armenian armoured systems, artillery and air defence. Um, and, you know, it's not a fancy warplane. It's, it's not a fancy uh, missile. It's a it's a two, three million dollar drone that Turkey uh, is operating all over the region. And that is probably what has call, caused more military destruction on the battlefield that you're seeing right. than almost any other system.